Hi, I'm Amanda. And I'm Bram. From the Santa Barbara Middle School Teen Press, here with... And I'm Ernie Brooks. Hi, Ernie. It's nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. And this is wonderful. Nice what an opportunity. So, our first question is, what brings you to the Santa Barbara Underwater Film Festival? Well, something very, very special in my life. Uh, there's been a program designed called A Tribute to Ernie Brooks for the work that I've done within the oceans of the world. And the thought was to bring all of my students and my friends that I've known throughout the years back into a common place to give tribute to what we have done on our planet Earth during our lifetimes. So that's why I'm here. And I came in from in, uh, Seattle, Washington. That's where I, uh, I'm in a retirement community there, which I enjoy. But there's nothing like Santa Barbara or your Santa Barbara Middle School. Thank you. What was one of your first underwater experiences? Ooh, you like this. You like this. When I was uh, in the eighth grade, mm -hmm. um, I entered a swimming contest. Swimming contest was off East Beach. And the swimming contest was only 50 feet long. So you had to be a really fast swimmer in 50 feet. I swam the whole thing underwater, not on the surface, and I won. And that was the first time that I could really open my eyes and see things around. And I wanted to continue to be in the water. I liked the feeling of the, the fluid, the way you could move in the water. You could roll, you could turn. It's beautiful, and the sounds, and you can hear the shrimp in the bottom, the little, the little clicks and the elements. That was cool. the first. What lessons has the ocean taught you? To preserve, conserve. This is our planet. This is the water planet, mm -hmm. and that's the most uni unique thing that this planet has of all the solar systems. And it also was the very beginning of all life within the sea. Everything came from within the sea originally. And that's why we have to continue to preserve. And being a photographer, if I can show the beauty of what I see in every, every ocean, that I've dove in every ocean, and bring that back to the public, then maybe the world will start to really realize how important and how beautiful it is to keep it that way. That's a great answer. Thank you. These are good interviewing questions. So, one of my favorite pictures that you've taken is the evidence of man. And where were you, and when, where, when, where were you when you took the picture, and why was, why is the picture so special? Is that one of your favorites? Yeah, that, that is my favorite. That's interesting. Picture this day. Mm -hmm. We're on my, I have a purse saner. It's an old fishing boat. 70 year old fishing boat and we're off Santa Cruz Island and the weather was very rolly all day and the winds were blowing and I had 12 students on board with me from Brooks Institute all young underwater photographic students and I looked down at the at the water when I was anchored there and the water was just filthy dirty you know so I said to myself I'm going to show these young students a lesson so I sent three of them down to the bottom in 30 feet of water and I stayed about 15 feet underwater with my camera. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I noticed, their air bells coming out of their regulators in the back would be small when they started and they would grow as they would come toward the surface. And so I was looking across this while these bubbles and my, my students didn't know I was on top of them. I just said, told, I told them to go down there and find something and photograph it. Don't, don't make excuses. You know, you're gonna have to work the way it is. The water's not clear, so find something that looks good. But I was photographing these rising air bells coming up. And the one that you like, the evidence of man, was one of the air bells that came up and it came right, and I panned right in front of my camera like that. It was getting larger, and right before it broke, it made its shape. The beautiful, beautiful dome. It looks like a jellyfish when you yes. really look at it. But that's the story of how that happened. It, the, the, the water was turbid, it was dirty. My students were angry because they didn't see any pretty fish. 
but for me, that was one of the greatest experience of watching that bubble come up. And that's been a very popular image. Really. I really like that one. I Thank it you. It kind of looks like a little, you know how kind of witches have those like little crystal balls? Mm -hmm. I think it kind of looks like that. Good. With the stand and everything. Very visual. You're very, very visual. That's excellent. If you could take us to one place on Earth to go underwater, where would you take us? That's an awfully good question. Most of my... Uh, most of my diving until I was about 40 years of age was off the Channel Islands. Uh, San Miguel, Santa Rosa, Santa Cruz, Anacapa, Santa Barbara, you know, San Clemente. Um, the macrocystis, the kelp, was a beautiful part of my underwater photography there. The way it would sw swell back and forth. And then after I was 40 years old, I started diving in Antarctica. I dove beneath the North Pole in 1976. Uh, I'd done the Mediterranean, the Indian Ocean, um, the Atlantic, the Pacific, most of the lakes in the world. I think I would go back, I want to go back before I pass on to a little island called Bunakan. It's in Indonesia. And it's an island that has a volcano that comes up like this and there's steam rising from the volcano. And all the way around it, there, there's just two little villages. No transportation, everybody walks. Every place they go, they walk. They grow their own food, they're totally sustainable, they have a good rainfall, but the water is, is crystal clear. And that there's a current that goes around Bunakan that flows at about two knots. So it's always moving, so everything changes. Within 10 minutes, the manta rays come by, the, the beautiful puffin fishes, the jellyfish, and it's just totally remarkable. And it's not expensive. Money isn't the thing that drives that little Banakan Island. It's the beauty of it. It's not open to tourism. The people don't want a lot of tourists there. Tourism is not a good thing in some places because it causes a lot of pollution. And these people have learned not to pollute their ocean. You know, they don't use any plastic bags, you know. And uh, what they grow, they eat, and they recycle it into the earth. So that's, that's probably where I would like to go. It's one of my favorite spots. Why do you feel so connected to the ocean? Being a large percentage of water, <laughs> that's probably my connect. I love what it gives. I love its moods. When, it, when the ocean is angry and the earth is angry, you know, you, you learn to really prepare yourself. You know, you, you button your ship up, you put your preservers on, you, you know it's going to be get angry. And then, it turns around and it's glassy calm and there's sheer peace. I love the way that the sun, our day star, reflects off the surface of the water. I mean, to me, that's some of the most beautiful, beautiful things that I've ever seen is the sun reflecting off the surface of the water. Sunrise, noontime, sunset. That's why I enjoy it. Cool. What a class. Louis Sequoias, director of, of The Cove, says, films are weapons of mass construction. How do you think films can help preserve the waters on Earth? It's a universal language, filming, uh, if it's done properly. Um, and, and that's a very, very critical issue today, isn't it? But if we have an international language that transcends all dialects, like photography should, like the image that you saw uh, could be made by somebody in Romania with the same feeling that I was having right this, this very, very minute. It's easy to see. It can transcend. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's a heavy question. Yeah. I think the, the more we need, we need to know more. We need to have, need to have more information. And, and clear information that we can all understand together. Now, that's one thing that is very unique about our United States of America. We know what freedom is. 
and uh, and we know what our constitution was meant to say to deliver it to all of its people and uh, maybe one thing that they missed in the early days of when they drew it up is is to do more to make it a better place okay yeah and finally our school our school theme this year is the power of story what's your verse I need to see that. my hearing isn't that good where is it right here power of story what's your verse and then what do you what do you hope your verse is on in the story of the water on the earth is that your school theme yeah the power of story what's your verse Whoa. One thing my art teachers taught me before I answer your question. You are what you are. If you write a letter to somebody who you've never met and you have wonderful cursive or good printing and a signature that has a flow to it, you'll get a reaction. If you have a sloppy handwriting, which is hard to read, that person's going to judge you just like that. I learned a long time ago to have a very, very good handwriting. Those came from my art teachers. And I love your theme. I think that's a, that's a wonderful thing. Um, the power of a story is how it's told, where it's told, when it's told, and who is the audience. And you're the audience in my work. I would rather have programs designed for you than for some of the older adults today. Uh, they want to. They want to see loud. They want to see louder music. They want to see things moving really fast. But with you, where you're studying language and music and writing and storyboard, it has to flow. And my programs are designed to flow. And that's my take. Yeah. Thank you so much. You sure you want to use this? This has been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And you know what, let me, let me just end this. The beautiful part about your school, your middle school, is the way it is attracting other young people wanting to be with you. Normally when you have a grade in an early junior high school, you know, things, things pull at each other. But at your middle school, everybody wants to be there. You have an opportunity to grow individually, which is really important. And not as a big body, but as every individual. And you can express yourself and people will listen. You know, and you've chosen to go to middle school. It's a choice that you're making, and that's important. It really is. And I wish you all the luck in the world in what you're doing. And I look forward to coming up and seeing you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The words are very inspiring. So are you. Thank you. You make my heart beat, too. Okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. It was really nice to meet you. Thank you so much.